This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account her normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. And so here we are, we are on the account that we're going to be rebuilding from zero GP, completely empty bank, all the way to max cash. I am not maxed combat, but we do have pretty decent starting stats, and besides that, we have completed a lot of quests, but not a lot of the bigger ones. So I think a good way to kick off this series is to get some starter money to get all the things that I need to actually start doing some of the bigger quests. To begin my questing journey, I just need a couple of million GP to my name to be able to buy teleports, gear, and everything required to complete them. So you guessed it, we are going to the Corrupted Gauntlet, the primary area of rebuilding from zero GP on a decent level account. We're not going to be staying here for long though, so let's see what we can manage to get in just a couple of KC. Definitely need a bit of a warm up, but the first chest is going to be pretty decent loot. From zero GP we went all the way to 131k, that's why it's so good for rebuilding. Yo, what? 99 ranged? I didn't even know I was close to that. I, I feel like I forgot what it feels like to get combat levels at this point. I've been playing on a max combat account for so long. And finally, we are on the last one. I think I should have enough money after this one. We've done 15 corrupted gauntlets. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything super rare just yet. But let's have a go and see what we get. Nothing on the last one, but a very good one. Rune items are worth quite a lot. Nearly 2 million GP for all of this. And an elite clue scroll as well. Also for the crystal shards, I will not be using them for now. I can't really make use of them. I bought some gear and also on top of that, because I am going to be doing a lot of questing, I went over to Purdo and actually bought some of the items that are going to be super useful to me. For example, Ectophile, Rattle's Blessing for the teleport, Ardoin Cloak, and you can buy a bunch of items here. And I'm also going to get the Mauritania Legs actually, that's a good teleport. And yeah, they're very cheap, all of them. And lastly, of course, as I'm going to be using ranged quite a lot, we got the Avas Accumulator. So we have a pretty good setup now with magic and ranged. And we still have 275k to buy some quest items and teleport with. And so finally, we have everything needed to complete the first big quest, Secrets of the North. I need Secrets of the North for two main reasons. The first one being it unlocks the Phantom Muspa, which is one of the best consistent moneymakers in the entire game. Secondly, it is a requirement for Desert Treasure 2, which also unlocks four of the most consistent moneymakers in the game. But before then, I need to do some pre-quests. Cold War. My Arm's Big Adventure, Making Friends with My Arm, Devious Minds, and finally the last prequest I have to do before Secrets of the North, The Hazel's Cult. And here we are at the end of the Secrets of the North quest with the final boss fight, fighting the boss I want to kind of try out after this quest as well, The Phantom Musba. It is way easier during the quest, so even with my terrible gear this should be okay. Easy enough, that is everything I needed to do to complete the quest, so I guess let's go and hand it in. A ton of experience, two quest points, and that is now Secrets of the North completed, the first big quest of the video. I have to be honest, the money from the Corrupted Gauntlet is running very thin, so I'm going to take a bit of a break here from questing and do some Phantom Muspa and try to recoup some of my money. Of course, the dream would be to get a Venator Shard, one in 100, they are currently, as of recording this video, worth nearly 10 million GP. So let's see what we can get done. We actually managed to do it on the first attempt, a very, very slow kill, 747 for unfortunately a supply drop as well, so not worth too much. I'm definitely ditching the Ruby Bolts, they are Adamant type Bolts with the Rune Crossbow, so not the best, and we get 150k worth of loot, that is really good, and 6 minute kill as well, so definitely improving. But yeah, I'm going with Diamond Bolts, they're Runeite at least. Maybe it's the Diamond Bolts, or maybe it's me actually getting more into it and not screwing up every single prayer flick. But uh, we managed the first two kill trip. I'm very happy with that. With this gear setup, it's actually kind of difficult. Oh, that's why we are doing the Phantom Muspa. Look at that. That's like a 350k drop from 1kc. With the money from the last kill, I decided to spend some money on runes and actually swap over to the Ancient Spellbook. So we're now using Ice Barrage, which is more expensive, but oh, okay. I guess uh, we're fine on money, so I can definitely keep using Ice Barrage. 
I want to keep doing the Phantom Muspa, so I'm going to get some gear upgrades to make this even faster with a double dragon plate leg drop. We just have to do it. The Occult Necklace for 10% more magic damage. And the second upgrade I'm making is the Mage Arena 2 cape. I'm getting the Saradomin one because it fits very nice with my blue mystic. All right, Collodion, give me that nice upgraded Saradomin cape for 2% more magic damage and 15 magic accuracy. That is going to help quite a lot with landing my ice brushes. I feel like the magic upgrades are putting in work that definitely felt a bit faster than my previous kills. 530, personal best by what, like 30 seconds or more than that even, definitely worth it. Oh, we got the first frozen cash. These are not that rare. They're basically a loot box of a random item on the Phantom Muspa loot table and we get 21 limper roots, okay. Well, uh, this is what happens if you have bad DPS in the final phase of the Phantom Muspa. The whole room gets covered with spikes and, uh, well, I don't think I can actually do DPS to the boss now, can I? The spikes despawn after every single... T no, okay, there's no way. I'm getting out. I think after this one, we should now get a combat achievement for 25 KC. There it is, Phantom Muspa Veteran. And I really want to get one of those Venator shards. I'm just going to keep going and make hopefully a lot of money in the process. We're actually up to 35 KC now of the Phantom Muspa. And I've sold a lot of loot that I've collected so far because I wanted to make a ranged upgrade. And that ranged upgrade is the Dragon Crossbow worth 1.7 million GP. Because this allows me to use the Dragon Bolts instead, which is actually quite a massive upgrade. Already on the first kill done, I do feel a difference. So let's see how much faster this was. 355. Oh my god. That was like 30 seconds faster than the last kill. I'm not sure if that's all down to the bolts. Maybe I had some nice RNG, but that's a good pattern. Yes! We actually got it on 40kc. That is so much money. That's going to what? Like triple my bank? 9.24 million. It has been going down in price a bit lately, but that is so nice. It has definitely been going down in price a bit. It seems to be 9.1 million. Yes, okay. It insta sold 9.1 million after tax and no way. We got so close to 10 million GP. I wanted a green cash tax so much. It had to be done. I had to sell some of my death runes I still had to get the green cast tag. That is definitely good enough to get into some questing again. The next quest on the chopping block is Monkey Madness 2. We already have all the requirements for this quest and I had to go and get another Gree Gree because I had thrown this away. Of course, we had nothing, so that was quite a hassle to get done. We can now complete the quest. I used to hate doing quests, but uh, the quest helper has definitely made this quite a lot nicer. It really is a blessing. Definitely not the most efficient way of killing this boss. You can safe spot it, but not with ranged, unfortunately. And currently my range setup is just better than everything else, but that is now Croc defeated. And we have arrived at the worst part of the quest. This massive maze platform is just absolutely horrendous, but luckily the quest helper should make this slightly easier. Honestly, even with the quest helper, this was an absolute nightmare to get done. 35 minutes, got caught like three times because I messed up, but finally, it's done. Honestly, can't say I'm sure this is the way you're supposed to kill the final boss, but uh, we got it done anyways, one more hit, and that's it. That is Glove defeated, and Monkey Madness 2 is pretty much done now, just have to go and talk to an NPC, and uh, we have our rewards. So what is the main reason to why I wanted to complete Monkey Madness 2? The main reason is Demonic Gorillas. These are not that difficult to kill, and they have a 1 in 300 chance to drop the Senite Shard. These are currently worth around 7 million GP, so there is some insane money to be made in this. I did have to buy some items that I will use on the Demonic Gorilla grind, a blowpipe, abyssal whip, dragon boots, and also full proselyte, but I'm still missing some items for this grind. The first item I'm missing is the dragon defender, dropped from the high level cyclops, and normally you will have to go all the way from bronze to dragon, but as I've already done it before, you can start right away and get the dragon. And there we have it, almost exactly on drop rate, 97 KC for the Dragon Defender. This is a massive DPS increase for melee with 6 melee strength and a lot of accuracy bonuses. Also looks really nice. And the second thing I need is the Fire Cape. After this wave, we are actually hitting Jad, so hopefully I am not going to die. Hey, we got it done. That's my second ever Fire Cape on this account. New personal best as well. Probably last one was like an hour, so makes sense it was a personal best. But let's have a look at this. The Fire... That looks so buggy. What the, what is wrong with my fire cape?
And so here we are with the final setup I'm going to be killing demonic gorillas with. I actually bought Fury and Varax Blade Skirt as well because I had some leftover money. Also, I am not using an Arc Light because I do not have any ancient shards. Ideally, that would be the best weapon, but uh, unfortunately, I can't use it and a whip will have to do. And honestly, I don't need an arc light. The defense of these creatures is not that great, so you can actually just do very well even with budget setups, which is why it's such a good rebuilder. Oh no way. What? We're on 15 KC. We already have the first Senite shard. Red beam as well. That looks so good. 7.15 million GP. I think we're going to make some upgrades. You know, I can't complain. First trip, 7.5 million GP in 15 KC. I think that's pretty good. Oh, we're going to look so good after we equip these upgrades. Serpentine helmet, light bearer, and a carrier's leather top. We actually had no good ring at all, and the special attack on blowpipe really is pretty good on demonic gorillas to extend their trips. It heals you when used, and uh, this is now my setup. This looks really high level, honestly, for how early into my account I am. That's so nice to see. Now, with these upgrades done, I actually can bring way less food because I can heal so much with the blowpipe spec and the light bearer combination. And we actually managed to do around 29 kills on the first trip. So that is really good. And let's have a look at how much money we made without getting a Senai chard. So even without a Senai chard, we made nearly 600,000 GP from one trip. So definitely not that bad money. Oh! What? We're on 90 KC only! A second Senite Shard? Oh, uh, that should have taken 600 KC to get two of them, but we did it in 90. Let's go. Oh, we got a light frame. It's actually a collection log. It is uh, quite a lot more rare, actually, than the Senite Shard. It's one in 750, but worth basically nothing. Mmm! What? I was drinking my coffee. I didn't expect a back-to-back. -back. Ballista limbs. That's one in 500, and actually... You can combine these, make an incomplete light ballista. Maybe we'll complete a full ballista in this grind. I think completing Monkey Madness 2 was a pretty good decision. 7.8 million GP in another trip. It's been another 100 KC and I haven't seen another shard, which of course is to be expected. But uh, I will go until we get one more Senai shard and that will be the stopping point. So let's see how long that is going to take. No, not another ballista limbs. Ah, I couldn't even complete my ballista with this. That's it. That is the final Senite Shard. That actually took quite a while. Not too bad, though. I mean, I've been very lucky here. We pretty much got double the amount of Senites we should have got. We ended on 452 KC. This is all the loot we got, and pretty happy with the grind. Everything from the last 300 Demonic Gorillas has been sold, including, of course, the two Senites being most of it for 18 million GP. And after putting it into the bank, we now have a 36 million GP bank. With the fruits of our labor collected from Monkey Madness 2, it is time to complete the next big quest. And this one is actually kind of massive. We are completing Death of Treasure 2, but as you can see, I have some requirements I'm still missing here, so let's get these done. The first one is a mini quest where I have to complete one Barrow's Run, so let's see what the loot is going to be. No way, we actually get an item as well, 236k and the strange, uh, what is this, strange icon needed for the quest. Definitely, I'll take that. And that's the quest done, and we also got an experience lab for 20,000 prayer experience. The first actual quest completed, Anakra's Lament. Not that good experience, but the Camulet is going to be pretty useful later on in the account. And the final quest I needed was Garden of Death. 10,000 farming experience, and we can now actually get into Desert Treasure 2 already. Now, there are four bosses during the Desert Treasure 2 quest, and I'm looking at one of them right now that I have to defeat. And of course, my gear is not going to be optimal, but they are a bit easier during the quest, so let's see if we can get it done. Well, uh, that was uh, a lot easier than I anticipated. I guess the quest version of the bosses are heavily nerfed. Okay, this is hands down the coolest thing I've ever seen a plugin do. It has a boss before the actual fight where you can practice and see all the mechanics for. The Leviathan is part of the Quest Helper plugin. You can use this Leviathan to see what its attack look like and practice reacting to them. That is insane. But without too much problem, that is the real Leviathan defeated. And that is the odd key obtained from the Duke. And finally, we have the Whisper defeated very easy during the quest for the last piece, the Entrails. Honestly, I expected more struggle with this quest with my current gear setup, but I guess you don't need that much. That is the Desert Treasure 2 completion, and we now have a bunch of XP lamps that I'm going to be putting on prayer for 300,000 prayer XP. And that is 80 prayer.
Now, with this treasure 2 completed, we have access to the four new bosses of the quest, and outside of it, they are quite a lot more difficult. But with my current budget, I think I can actually decently take on Vardorvis. So we have a couple of upgrades I want to make, and then we'll get into Vardorvis. We have made some big purchases for Vardorvis, and luckily, I have 2.4 million Nightmare Zone points, so we can instantly imbue the Berserker Ring. We are going to make a Blood Amulet of Fury as well, and uh, this is actually not wasting my Amulet of Fury at all. I will get it back after the charges are gone, so that's all fine. But this one, I actually am sacrificing my Abyssal Whip for. So we now have a Tentacle Whip, we have a Blood Fury, and a Berserker Ring imbued. We are also, for the first time in this video, going to be using Thralls, and for that, you need a lot of runes. I actually spent 2 million GP on getting a rune pouch. Of course, the dream weapon here would be the Osmontan's Fang, but it is a bit out of range for me when it comes to price. But if I do manage to get some nice drops from this boss, or even one of the massively rare uniques, I could maybe get it as one of my first purchases to speed up this grind quite a lot. But the goal is going to be to get the Vestige. Now, the Vestige is 1 in 1,088, so it's going to be a very long grind. I have to say, I'm actually kind of impressed by how good this tentacle whip has been doing with Torg as well. No strength bonus pretty much for my armor. A 247. Actually, not that bad. My kills are actually only getting faster and faster. Even with a terrible setup like this, we are doing work. 18 Runite or 200k for 2 minutes and 19 seconds. No way. <laughs> What? How am I getting the Butch pet on 7kc? One of the coolest pets in the entire game. Look at that. It actually has emotes as well. I gotta show you guys that. But 7kc. Uh, I need money right now. So uh, I would rather take that. But even looks cool in my inventory actually. But uh, I, I guess we'll take that. If I get all the items I want, all the rares, then we complete the collection on now. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is the only pet in the entire game who has emotes. So if you click emote, it's going to do one of its attacks. I think there are three different ones. The slap, the backflip, and lastly, yeah, the one that puts the tentacle in the ground. And that's pretty much it. But that's such a cool pet to have. And it can't say anything because it has no head, I guess. Oh, nice. Okay, we got the strangle tablet on 18 KC. Also personal best, 216. That is, of course, the teleport with the Ring of Shadows right to this boss, so that's going to save a lot of time. And this is how that looks. I've now put it in, and let's teleport to the Strangle Woods, and this is how close I am. I just have to run a bit north, and pretty much I'm at the boss, right there. Hey, the first Awakener's Orb. Alright, 26kz, definitely not as uh, rare as the pet, but way more valuable. Into another one, only a couple of kz later. Including the one KC you get during Desert Treasure 2, that is now 100 KC on Vardorvis. And all the items that I've got is pretty much just paying for supplies at this point. So we really need those very extremely expensive rares to make a lot of money. But of course, we haven't really been unlucky at this point with a pet and everything. I guess the perfect time to talk about perfect kills. If you fail no mechanics on Vardorvis, you get 50% more loot and that is a very good drop to get that on. We now have the answer to how many Vardorvis kills I can do with one Abyssal Tentacle and that answer is 180. I have 27 charges left, and dissolving this removes the whip, but not the tentacle. So every 180 KC, I have to buy another whip for 1.4 million. You know what? I'll actually take that. The Blood Quartz now unlocked on the collection log. That is an upgrade to the Ancient Scepter obtained from the Muspa. Allows you to overheal basically with blood spells in the future, so actually pretty useful. And also remember, I am not maxed combat, so 98 hit points, one more to 99 hit points, pretty cool. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go! We actually got the Virtus Robot on, 350kc, kind of early into the grind. You know what that means, it's worth over 30 million GP. So if we sell this, we can get a bit of a weapon upgrade that also does not dissolve and I don't have to recharge. Let's go ahead and see what it sells for, 30.9 million, I definitely will get enough to buy an Osmontan's Fang, 30.5 million. Let's go ahead and see what it's actually selling for, 26.8, 26. Point, maybe 27? Alright, 27.3 million, good enough. And look at that, that is quite a weapon upgrade, also a special attack in itself, so I'm going to bring this instead of the DDS.
The Fang actually has a lower max hit than the Whip, but it's just way more accurate, so our kills are going to be roughly around the 2 minute mark every single time. Instead of the sometimes 3 minute kills and sometimes 1.5 minute kills, it is going to be steady in the middle, always consistent, which is going to end up being more kills an hour. I mean, at this point, I was expecting it. 476 KC for the first Chromium ingot. It is on the rare drop table, not as rare as the other pieces, but also not as expensive. Oh my god, what? I stopped recording because I didn't think we got anything. I just got a second butch pet on 691 KC. Why am I getting this? It's so much more rare than the items that I actually want. After this one, we're hitting a very, very big milestone and we're getting really close to the drop rate of the actual Altor Vestige itself and that is 1000 KC done. The four digits look so good in the chat box. And actually, let's have a look at the collection log and you guys can see how my loot is looking right now we've got 13 orbs and we've got one virtus piece other than that two pets and three chromium ingots it's unfortunately not worth a lot of money oh i didn't even expect that 99 hit points that is the second 99 in one video we truly are grinding out the combat stats in this video Oh, uh, okay, it is really good, 30 million GP, but it's been so long, and I'm kind of expecting the Vestige now, and the Vestige is like 180 million, but uh, yeah, 30 million drop, I'll take it, that is the second Virtus piece, and of course, it is a duplicate, so we now have two of the same, but if I'm going to be getting duplicates of any Virtus pieces, the bottoms is not that bad. You know, for the past couple of 100 kills on Vardorvis, I collected a bit of a loot tab and I decided to sell everything with a Virtus Row bottom to actually get some nice upgrades. Instead of the Torx gear, I'm going to be going for the Bandos gear, which is quite a massive upgrade. And actually, with some money to spare even, I should be able to buy both of them and that should speed up the grind by quite a bit. And the gear overall anyways for the future is going to be super useful, so I'll probably keep it for a very long time anyways. It's kind of crazy we're still on episode number one of this series because my character looks absolutely stacked now with the full bandles of Mountain's Fang and Blood Fury and we still have the vestige to get, which is the last puzzle piece of this episode. Oh my god! Oh my god, yes! 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 We finally got the vestige on 1413 KC! Man, I'm getting like... 25 to 30 kills an hour on this boss when I absolutely focus up and I've been here for like 60 hours grinding for this item and we finally got it. Look at that collection log, man. Oh, we are about to make so much money. We have everything we need to make the ring. It's finally time to make it. Let's go ahead and combine the Berserker icon with the Altar Vestige. 500 blood runes as well. And uh, there it is, the Altar icon. And we have also bought the Chromium ingot. It's finally time. The last step craft an Altar ring. And there it is. The Altar ring has been achieved from scratch. So let's go ahead and uh, price check this beautiful ring. It is currently 185 million GP. That is quite some profits. Let's see if we can instantly sell this for 185 million. We cannot, but it seems to be going for 186 million. So I'm just going to keep it here for a bit. And okay, there it is. It already sold 183.1 million after tax. We have increased our bank value by quite a lot. Let's have a look at how much our bank is currently valued at. So our gear tab is worth 93 million GP, of course the Bandos and those Mountains Fang bringing that up quite a bit, but overall our bank now after episode 1 is worth 290 million GP, that is quite a good start, but there is still one thing I want to do. And that last thing is to open one of each clue scroll, except for a beginner clue scroll, I got zero of those during this video, so let's go ahead and begin with the easy one. Okay, not too good, 9,000 GP. The second one is the medium. We have a chance of getting Ranger Boots here, so this could be a lot of money right here. But it's not. Well, 230k, not bad. And then we have the Hard Clue Scroll, 91k, and the last one, Elite, has to be something good here. 96k, not the best opening, I guess, but we got it done. Next time around, we're spending this 183 million GP on some great gear upgrades as we're going to be doing some really cool stuff. I hope to see you there, but until next time, guys, take care.